welcome to Crochet, a Canadian Crochet Podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to go back to my usual sort of podcast episode, and I'm going to let you know what I have finished, what I am working on, and I, we're going to get into a little bit of a special topic because I've had this question come up a few times. So let's get at it. What I have finished this week. The two weeks. I have had two weeks. That's right. Because I did not work on anything for the last episode before I recorded it. So here we go. Um, yes. So I've been working. I feel like I've been working really hard in the last two weeks, but not trying to get that panicky crochet because sometimes I can get like that I need to work on something and it needs to get done and it needs to be a certain way. And then I'm like, you're doing this for fun. Chill out. So here's what I made. Finished. Stoked. I finished my gauntlets. I have the second one finished and it matches the first one. And I put some embroidery on this one and I was going to do both of them, but I think I'm just gonna leave it because it turns out I'm not great at, at embroidery. Um, I'll give you a close up view of this. So ho hopefully it'll focus, I'll keep my face out of there. It's supposed to be lavender, um, but as you can see, the green and the gray are very similar, so you can't really see it. I should have used um, a different green. That being said, I have been trying to live in the spirit of use what you have, and this is what I had. So I went with it, and you know, the purple is, is more of a lilac. Like, we have a lilac tree beside our house, and the color of the flowers is similar to this. It's not like that mid-range. It's like a very, my daughter says it's like a smelly purple, but it's like that. So yeah, but again, I used what I had. I had fun doing it. I learned a lot. And if this is something I want to do later on, I think I need more practice, but I would do it on a flat surface instead of like this, because this was hard. I ended up, I ended up sewing the things together a couple of times. So story of my life, right? But I got my gauntlets finished. And I love them and I've used them and I did end up putting a bit of a thumb on them. As you can see, I just, I like them better like this. It just worked out better. All right, you remember this pink? I just showed you a little preview. Um, so remember I was dreading doing the cross stitch on it. And then, you know, Instagram is a bit of the bane of my existence, but all of a sudden this free crochet pattern popped up on my feed and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. So I decided to crochet her, my daughter's sweater, not her, um, a star, a star. She didn't want a star, she wanted a snowflake. Come on, let's go to the program woman. Um, a snowflake and I just I did it based on the picture that I saw I didn't even actually look at the pattern the pattern is free we'll try to find it for you it's gonna be hard um, but so this is it I ended up just crocheting this separately as you can tell and I applied it on and it has been through the wash and the dryer and for whipping this up just looking at a picture, I think it turned out really well. My daughter chose this yarn and she really loves it. Hopefully you can see. Um, it is glittery, it is girly, it is pink and purple and blue and she loves it. And it's, yes, it's been washed, it's been worn and it has survived all of that. So I will say I did a good job. <laughs> I am happy with this one. And this is not something that I showed anybody that I was working on other than I had purchased the yarn for it but it is done now as well. It is a great cardigan for myself. It is to replace a fast fashion cardigan that I purchased and I deeply, deeply regret it. And this is the one I was talking about. I think I spoke of this anyway, that I didn't realize it was fast fashion until I did some research on the company. And then, you know, when you know better, you do better. And I'm trying to do better. So I need this. This is the, um, loops and threads or it's, it's wool like anyway um i will put all the details in the ravelry link um in the description about this because it's sometimes these things i feel are easier to receive in type versus um in video but i can explain a few things um further in 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 the description we'll just say that just follow the description link you will get more information about this i'm going to just give you a brief overview of what i did so I was discussing last time, time before, one of the times anyway, about um, how I made sweaters and that I could make a cardigan basically the same way. So that is what I did. And I put this neck on it and I wouldn't recommend anyone else do it. I like it because it's, it's kind of weird, but I like weird stuff. So I'm happy with it, how it turned out. 
Um, and the buttons, I was at, oh, I basically had no buttons. So this is all that I had that would work with this. I don't love them. I wanted wooden buttons instead, but I am trying to go on a, like, not a yarn fast exactly. I'm trying to use up a bunch of stuff that I have because I don't need to buy any more yarn. Like I really, really, really don't. I really, really don't. So I'm trying to do the best that I can. Um, this ended up being five balls of the yarn and I used um, two strands together at the same time. Otherwise I would have had to use, I think a three millimeter or three and a half millimeter hook. And I was trying to go with something a tiny bit thicker because I wanted something thicker for the upcoming season. And the weight ended up turning out perfectly. Also, I am just hearing this now because I get like deaf to these things. My husband is sanding in the garage right now. So that is what you hear in the background. I apologize. I cannot do this in a noise-free zone. I also have a fountain over here as well. So. I'm sorry, this is my life. Back to regular sketching programming. Um, anyhow, yes, this turned out really well. And I actually, like you can see the seam here. This is something I have been working on for a long time to try to get to be almost invisible. And I would say like, while you can see it right here, this is the seam. I absolutely, I love, love, love the fact that I got it so like perfectly straight this time and that it's not as noticeable as I have had in the past with sweaters. So I've definitely increased my skill level there if I may toot toot my own horn. So that is, that is my sweater. I love it. I just got it out of the wash. So it's all lovely. Cardigan, it's a cardigan, right? Sweater is when it's shut at the front. Is that right? Let me know in the comments. Am I saying these things all wrong? Is a sweater to you where you live? Is it a close front or is it an open front? Let me know. Do you use these things interchangeably? I seem to use them interchangeably, even though I know what I mean. All right, what I am working on. I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook. I actually have it in my hand um, for the Burnett Premium. This is that Erin colored yarn. I'm trying to make a cropped top. As you can see, it's massive. I have to take it apart. I'm not doing it based on measurement. I just started going and it did, it, it worked and it didn't because the sleeves, I like the way the sleeves are on this because um, I wanted like little sleeves, but this ended up being way too wide. So I'm going to have to pull the last oh, three rows apart and then um, decrease it to fix this. Um, but I mean, it, it's turning out, it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so yes, I have this dress that I bought and I, it's like jammies. So I don't wear it all that often. And the belt that I have for it doesn't really go and it doesn't work. So I don't wear it all that often unless I had, unless I, ha unless I have a cardigan that I can like cross over the front and like make a shape out of it. Cause it's like basically this short sleeve thing that goes like that. So I wanted to make this because I can wear it and it will like naturally cinch it in. Um, and because there will be um, front and back post double crochet around the, again, like around this part, like mid rib to hold it in. Um, I might make it a bit longer to go where my natural waist is. I, again, this is something I have to like try it on and figure it out as I go. Um, there isn't really a pattern. I found a video and I want to say it's in Spanish, but I, I haven't actually listened to it. The, the words lead me to believe it's Spanish. I'll leave it in the link below. Leave it in the description box below. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry today. I'm in like a really goofy mood. It's been really, really busy at my work and I'm kind of like, like spacey all the time because my brain is just like code, 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 code. For those of you who don't know, which is probably most people that uh, are watching me, I'm a web developer. That is my vocation is I am a web developer. So I am like, I'm a professional nerd, professional nerd. I specialize in CSS, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, MySQL, all of that stuff. That, but that is like, that is what I do uh, as my day job. So when I'm thinking in code, 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 code all the time, it's really hard for me to like unlatch from that and to think about like real life stuff. So there's times I'm like, get the, uh, 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 and I want to say pants and I can't think of the word pants. So apologize. I'm, I'm trying to like detach and do this at the same time. And sometimes it's better than others, but bear with me. Anyhow, that is what I am working on right now. Also, if you follow me on Ravelry, I have a, um, a baby blanket that I'm going to adjust to make to be toddler size in my Ravelry queue. Um, and it is based on the pattern that is, I find this whole story very interesting, which is nerdy, but I do. Um, 
I really like the show called Midwife. And the pattern actually is from the 80s that they they used, I believe. But they have these adorable little blankets that, like, in that baby, like, lemon yellow color. Do you know the color I'm talking about? Um, it's, like, the perfect 50s blanket because it's, like, totally, like, throwback. Like, for me, like, in my mind, it's, like, this, like, beautiful vintage style, like, doily adjacent blanket so the blanket that i am referring to it is a series of double crochet and you just have to count and some chaining and things like that it's not hard i just have to get repracticed on it because i only made one blanket once and it was really small so i didn't like get it locked in all the way um but it's individual like it looks like it's individual squares but it's not individual um but the the pattern is this square repeat so you have this square and then it's like double crochet and then the next row, like you skip one and you do all of these things. So it sort of makes like a dragonfly or like a bumblebee appearance or kind of like this. It's not really a flower, but it has like a loop sort of like this, then like this, then like this, then like this. That's that's how it looks, but it's super cute. But I love the fact that the pattern is actually from the 80s, but they used it on called the Midwife, which is originally set early 50s. I believe they're in the 60s now. I haven't watched for a season, which makes me sad. But I have the opportunity to make this, so I'm going to because I love it. It's so cute. One of my favorite patterns to make that I actually follow the pattern. Okay, so I've gotten a few questions about how how I make things, not exactly what patterns I have used to make the things that I make. And I unfortunately have to come back a lot of the times and say, I learned this skill from here, I learned this skill from here, and then I made this. And that's what happens. So um, in terms of, I can use this cardigan as an example. So um, what I did with this is I've used a pattern pattern that's locked in my brain. Um, I usually just go by measurement and by feel and what I think I would like. Um, but how I learned how I learned to make this is that I um, I learned how to make square neck square yoke baby dresses, and that is actually the foundation for this because I'm like if I can make a baby dress, I could make this in the same size for an adult, right? So I did. One time I made myself a little cute top and do I still have it? I think somebody actually wanted it so I gave it to them. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Um, but so I made that and then I was like, well, like sleeves are just basically like a tube and I know how to increase and decrease so I can do that. So I did that. That's what this is. This is, this is a tube that I decreased, oh goodness, probably I started a small decrease about here and then it's the same to the end and then I did a decrease again. And ribbing, I've done ribbing before on hats. So, and I've, I learned how to do front post, back post crochet for my Atlas um, triangle scarf that I have the pattern for, link details in the description box below. And if I don't alternate them, that makes ribbing. And I have made buttonholes. No one taught me how to make a buttonhole, but I did a double crochet and then a skip. That's three skips and then I finished it off. So these are just things that I have learned over time and I put the pieces together in my head as I make them. Um, I am a kinetic learner, which means I am a person that learns by doing, which is why I started basically this whole series off with that dress that I was putting together, pulling apart, putting together, pulling apart, because that's how I learn. Secondarily, I'm also a visual learner, so YouTube has been great for that because I have been able to learn so many different skills on that, and then I practice them myself, and I don't usually make it the whole way through a tutorial. Once, once I feel like I have the basics down, I'll just keep going, and then that's how I go. Um, so that's how I make things. And I've learned, I've learned a lot of skills along the way, which have definitely, definitely helped me. So one thing, and it often confuses people, but I say, if you can make a tube, you can make a mitten because a mitten is really just two tiny tubes together. Um, you start, you start usually the same way and we'll use a basic top down example, but you'll start with your, um, I typically do eight, um, double crochets, usually however many, but eight stitches into my ring or into the first um, stitch. Uh, and then, you know, you would, to do increasing, you, to do a flat increase, which again, like this applies to carpets or rugs as well. So um, in the, in the second row, you would do two stitches in each stitch. And then the next row, the third one, you would do 
double, single, double, single, double, single in terms of like the increase. And then you just keep going from there to get it flat. And then how to make it stop being flat is that you just stop adding, you stop increasing, you just do the same amount. So that's exactly the same as you would do like for a toque. So you do a few rows that increase, then you stop increasing and then you get that nice like that shape and it just goes down. That's exact same for a mitten. It's just that this is so much longer than a hat. You just you just keep adding rows of this until you're happy with the length of it or you, you know go to here, whatever. And a, a thumb is the same. I would probably do eight and then just do a single and then add a few stitches sort of around this area to add the thumb in. But once you learn the basics, then you can do a lot of these things. And so much of it is just by feel and by counting and that sort of thing. That like that's that's really how I go. I'm like, if this feels like it's working out, it's probably working out. So when I tried that little dress on and it was like poofy around like, it's kind of like in the crotch, it's weird. I was like, okay, this doesn't feel right. So it's not, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not. And if it looks weird, it's probably not. That being said, I made some toques that look really weird, but my kids love them or they fit once you put them on. So you can't always, you can't always go just by that. Um, but that's, that's the thing. So if you're a learner that, so, okay, I feel like I'm the exact opposite of my husband. I could give him individual components of something and he could build the thing. If you did that to me, I would have no idea what I was doing. That being said, if you gave me the thing, I was like, what is this made of? I can figure that out. Um, so that's, that's what I do. And that's how my skill set works. So I access in my brain, all of these things. I sort of keep, I keep like a mental spreadsheet of all of this stuff and it's really, it's really funny. It's really weird to describe to people because lots of people are like, I'm a crazy woman, but this is just how my brain works. So I can access these things in order to repurpose them for a new situation. So like the buttonhole thing, I'm like, okay, like I, I know how to double crochet and then chain some and then add it a few spaces later. So like that's a buttonhole. Like, there we go. If I don't want that much space, I can use a single crochet, right? Like you just have to, you just have to really, you really have to practice the skills. I find, I think that would be the thing I would advise to be successful is that you practice, 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 practice. So, um, like I've made, um, I had a scarf for sale. It has been purchased and this is not where I learned the skill, but it's an example. It's something that it was double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain repeatedly. And then it gets this really cool kind of like airy fun look about it. Um, so like, but that's essentially like I've made a buttonhole a million times. So like, that's that. The toque and the mitten and slippers actually. Slippers, if you can make a toque, you can make a slipper. You can do it, I promise. Um, a lot of things also are really rudimentary, like my gauntlets that I've made. It's basically a square and then I just added the thumb after. But if you can, again, if you can square, square if you can crochet a square or a rectangle you can make a very rudimentary gauntlet it's not it's not rocket science um the things that i find that i get hung up on personally in terms of patterns are learning new stitches that being said think of it this way if you also have this issue is that what skills do you have that go into that stitch because once you learn a chain, a single crochet, a double crochet, and a treble crochet, you have learned the foundation for basically every other stitch that there is because everything is kind of a variation of that or uh, like a puff stitch. A puff stitch to me, like in my mind when I learned a puff stitch is that it's an incomplete double crochet a bunch of times. That's how it's stored in my head. It lives under the double crochet and also when I, when I keep track of those things that way, then I sort of also, I understand the spacing of things. So I know that if I was going to do a puff stitch, I'm not going to do eight puff stitches on the top of a hat. I can do like four because it's like so much bigger than that. And that, okay, a granny, a granny stitch is, you know, another example is that it's three double crochets in a chain. Like it's nothing fancy, but that's the foundation of it. So, um, for those of you who are newer to crochet and even if you're struggling to learn new skills, that's what I would say is like really get a fantastic in for however that works for you, a fantastic foundation of your very basic stitches, chaining, your foundation chains, um, double crochet, single crochet, and your treble crochet. These are American terms. I apologize. This is what I learned. 
but the, that's that's what I would recommend and like get those honed into your brain like so much because after that you will be able to access those memories and the way that your hands feel when you're doing them to learn something new. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope the previous little bit of chat was helpful for you. And I really hope that you are having a great day, great time when you're watching this. If you could please give me a like and subscribe, that would be fantastic. It helps this channel grow. And I am so glad that all of you have decided to join me today. Let me know in the comments below, do you call it a linen stitch or do you call it a moss stitch? Because I learned I'm in the minority, but I'm curious what the rest of you call it. Thank you so much. Have a great day.